Okay, you're good. Good afternoon, and welcome to our continuation of our Lenten series on the readings from the lectionary that we use in worship. How about we begin this session with a prayer? Loving God, you who give everything that is good to us, we ask that you fill this time with your spirit, open us to hear your word and to also live your word. We ask this as we ask all in your loving name, amen. This afternoon, what I'd like to look at is the first reading from this past Sunday. And it was from the prophet Isaiah. Now, during the Lent and Easter seasons, and through also some of the other liturgical seasons throughout the church year, the readings kind of bounce around in terms of where the particular passages are taken from. Isaiah is one of the major prophets within the Hebrew scriptures or the, the Old Testament. And Isaiah dates from the 8th century CE, or I'm sorry, BCE, and was more than likely an individual who came from the upper class or part of the priestly order in Judea and Israel at the, the time. Isaiah is known for very specific passages that with the onset of Christianity, have been used or interpreted to speak about the fulfillment of what is known as the messianic prophecy, or talking about the fulfillment of the Messiah coming into the world, which for Christians is Jesus the Christ. Isaiah, though, has a very, very social justice interpretation. Isaiah very much was aware of the divisions that existed between the upper class, those who had, and the impoverished of Judea and Galilee at the time. Isaiah very much speaks to the need of caring for the poor, caring for the widow, caring for those who are in need, those whose needs are not being fulfilled. Isaiah very much speaks of the reality that for the Israelite community, the way to keep the covenant with Yahweh is very simple. Meet the needs of those around you. In other words, for Isaiah, he was telling the people of his time that if you see someone who has a need, take care of it. If you see a widow that has no income, help her. An orphan, take them in. Someone who is in need of food or clothing or shelter, provide for them as you are able. So that this past Sunday's beautiful passage about come to the water, come without having to pay, for the Lord provides, was a direct indication that Isaiah was attempting to say to the people of Israel at the time, look around you. If 
if you want to keep this covenant with Yahweh and you want Yahweh to continue to be the God who watch over and protects you, then you need to do your part. And the covenant is very simple. As long as you meet the needs of those around you, that's what God is asking for. Isaiah goes on further in, in different passages to say, Yahweh, or God, doesn't want all the burnt offerings. Yahweh, or God, doesn't care about all of the rituals that you're doing. God wants you to do justice. God wants you to care for those around you. It sounds rather familiar to what we hear in the gospel accounts, that Jesus very much met the needs of those around him. If he saw someone that was ill, he healed them. He offered comfort. Outcast, he welcomed. He ate with the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the sinners at his time. And he said, these are the first to enter the realm of God. Jesus wasn't concerned about all of the rituals. Jesus was very concerned with meeting the needs of those around him and being able to offer God's unconditional love to them. And that's why the prophet Isaiah becomes what is known as one of the major messianic prophets. What Isaiah puts forth in Isaiah's writings very much became lived out by Jesus. So we're able to, to see the connection between Isaiah and the fulfillment of Isaiah's words in Jesus of Nazareth. The bigger question, though, becomes how does Isaiah, an 8th century BCE prophet, speak to us? <coughs> excuse me, speak to us today. Now, keep in mind that the term prophet for the ancient Israelite community was not someone that so much told the future, but instead someone that called the people back to right relationship with God, back to keeping their covenant with Yahweh. And that's a basic interpretation or understanding of Christianity as well. Through our baptism, through our incorporation into the church or the body of Christ, we then have a responsibility to live out our covenantal or baptismal relationship with God. And what does God ask of us? The same as Isaiah was asking of the people of his time. To be just. To meet the needs of those around us. To reach out with humility to allow others to know God's love through our actions. For the prophet Isaiah, the other countries around the kingdoms of, of Israel would know that Yahweh was the living God, that Yahweh was the one true God because of how the Hebrew people treated one another 
and met the needs of the poorest among them. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the world was able to know that we are Christians, followers of Jesus, by our love? Wouldn't it be absolutely incredible if each and every believer was able to live out what the prophet Isaiah was asking of the people of his time. Wouldn't it be absolutely incredible if we all lived by what Jesus gave us as the example to love one another? It sounds rather simplistic, but in my belief system, and I believe throughout Christianity, that's been the basic message, to love one another, to care for one another, to accept one another, to be willing to put to the side whatever separates us, and instead see those around us as sister and brother as members of God's family. So even though the prophet Isaiah was from the 8th century BCE, a number of years ago, and may appear somewhat outdated, Isaiah's writings are actually extremely relevant for today. I would encourage each one of us to, if we have the, the opportunity, to possibly begin to take a look at some of Isaiah's writings. Keep in mind that they are written at a particular time. They're written in a specific style. But if we look at the basis of what Isaiah is trying to say, He's able to speak to each of us today and to speak to each of us as individuals that are called to maintain our covenant, our relationship with God by loving those around us. Not just loving those that are the same as us, but to love everyone as God loves us. I hope today's brief time has brought some insight and hopefully will enrich in our Lenten journey. Thanks for joining us today. God bless and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everyone.